Pro, and I am the associate for New York City programs at the New York League of Conservation Voters, and a proud representative representative of the New York City Clean School Bus Coalition. We are so we are so so excited to be here today to talk about electric school buses and Intro 455, which will mandate all school buses by 2035. And we have a lot of great speakers today that will come up and talk about how important electric school buses are. Um, but first and foremost, I want to thank Councilmember Drum for being here, for being a champion on this issue. I want to thank uh, 350 Brooklyn and Georgie Page. Uh, I want to thank Nelpy, NYLCB, WRI, all the groups that are here. Um, thank you everyone so, so much for being here. We're going to get this done and we're going to um, electrify all the school buses for all the kids in New York City. I'm going to pass things off to our first speaker, our president, NYLCB president, Julie Tai, to kind of kick things off. Um, and Julie Tai, everybody. All right, Julie. Hello, everyone. Hi, I'm Julie Tai. I'm president of the New York City Conservation Voter. I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson and Councilmember Drum and Gennaro and all the members of the council who have gotten on intro 455 for prioritizing our kids by fighting for clean school buses. At NYLCB, we started this coalition three years ago to advocate for electric school buses and partnered with all these incredible organizations who are here right now because we need electric school buses. They are the cleanest alternative with 70% fewer greenhouse gas emissions to fossil powered fossil power school buses, and they have no tailpipe emissions. We're going to fix and we're going to make New York City air quality better, not just for our smallest lungs, but also for the communities that are housing the bus depots where these dirty school buses are located now. We're going to move us closer to our goal to combat climate change because we have some dangerous chemicals in there and diesel exhaust, including NOx, that impact ozone, they impact heat, they bring air pollution that is toxic for our children, causing respiratory ailments. I'm sure others are going to talk about that today. Our students go to school to learn, and instead we're putting them at risk every day when we rely on dirty diesel buses. We aren't alone. When we do this, we are working with the entire conservation movement to get through our CHESPA program, clean school buses for kids across the entire country. Yeah. New York City, Woo! New York City is gonna make a big statement with our largest school district in the country when we go all electric with our school buses. for us to get us some money for clean school buses and build back better, hopefully as soon as today. Yeah. We love that we have a clean school bus here right now. This is not just technology of the future, it's technology that's right here down the block. We're very excited. Thank you to Logan School Bus for bringing that for us. Our time is now to deliver for our students and our for communities to make sure that they get intro 455 passed and make sure that we have a mandate for all of our school buses to be electric as soon as possible. So thank you so much, Councilman Drum, to the mayor's office, to everyone who's making this a reality. Let's get this done! Thank you, Julie. All right, um, because I forgot to do a chant, I'm gonna do one real quick. So after I say what I say, everyone's gonna repeat clean buses, all right? So I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna say healthy kids, and everyone's gonna say All right. Healthy kids. Clean buses. Healthy kids. Clean buses. Reduce emissions. Clean buses. Reduce emissions. Clean buses. Clean air. Clean buses. Clean air. Clean buses. All right. Thank you, everybody. Next, I'm going to introduce a very, very important person, Council Member Daniel Drum. He introduced this very important bill, and he is the prime sponsor of it. He has been a champion of this issue for a while now, and we really appreciate his partnership. Thank you very much, Carlos, and also to Chile, to New York League of Conservation Voters, to 350 Brooklyn, to uh, New York Lawyers for the Public Interest, and everybody else who's been involved in the Clean School Bus Coalition. You made this happen, and we are going to advance this legislation. We're going to make sure that this moves forward. Uh, by next week, we'll be having our stated meeting 
but it looks like we're at a very good point here now. The legislation was aged last night, and what's in that legislation is that we will have a totally complete clean bus a system in the city of New York school buses by 2035. There are no uh, appropriations regulations. This is something that will happen and must happen, and by law will happen. Uh, and we are looking forward to having 75 of those buses on the street by 2023, I believe, is the date of the legislation. So we got what we wanted in that legislation, and it has been long struggle, but it has been a worthwhile struggle. I don't remember when the first hearing was held, but I do remember the administration coming in and offering all types of objections and why it was not possible to meet this goal. And it is expensive, but we're worth it and our kids are worth it. And let me tell you why we are worth it and our kids are worth it. Before I got elected to the New York City Council, I was a New York City public school teacher for 25 years. And I had to sit on those school buses for 25 years, breathing in those fumes. It's amazing I'm still here with you. Seriously. Because every trip that I took with my students, we had to bring the bark bag. The bark bag was brought because the fumes always came in to the bus and made the Sick. It made me sick. So the first thing I would do, whether it was summer, spring, fall, or winter, when I got on the bus, was to open the window so that we could at least get some of those fumes out. But it is a well-known fact that the gases and the emissions that come from those school buses is literally sickening to children. And for those of us who believe in protecting children, as I do, as we all here do, this is why this bill is so vitally important, in addition to being important to our environment. So there are many, many benefits that are going to come out of this legislation. We have about a week left, and uh, then we're going to pass this legislation. It's probably going to be one of the big pieces left, big pieces of legislation that I passed in the New York City Council. But this is a legacy piece of legislation, and I'm very proud to be the sponsor of it. Thank you very much. Let me thank my colleague, Jim Gennaro, who I think is going to be here shortly. And, you know, Jim has been like the leader on all environmental issues. So Jim is like my environmental god at this point. So he'll be here. Helen Rosenthal as well. And who else is going to join us? I think I'm leaving someone out. Just, uh, just the three of us. But everybody in the city council, I'm sure we're going to get a very good vote on this next week. So thank you all for coming. And it's great to be here. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you, Council Member Drum. Um, so next up, I am going to bring to the stage Amanda Hott, who is a proud member of our coalition, is an amazing parent advocate. She brought her, her child here today. Uh, and um, she's the information specialist with United We Stand. So, Amanda.
have underlying respiratory issues, all right? The majority of people, that, the high numbers of people who have respiratory issues are in low-income communities, the communities that I service. And so I'm thinking that we need to start moving forward and protecting our future by cleaning out this air. And one of the ways that we're going to do that is by creating these vehicles or being able to have them in our low-income communities so that we're giving our children a fair share. We're giving them a leg up so that they can go ahead and become what we, what we want for the future. Idling by and, in, and, in, and inhaling these fumes makes them sick. I service families that have children with disabilities. In part, one of the things that I think about is when you have children who are constantly being picked up and dropped off and waiting and having two hour bus waits, all you're doing is inhaling that and it's making them sick slowly by, by slowly. Going into school, not being ready, having maybe having some issues because they're not feeling well and nobody understands why. Now, I believe in IDEA and I feel that in order for us to protect the rights and to protect the rights of students with disabilities, that these buses need to start being pushed out ASAP. Yeah. Because yeah. it is important and it is vital. It is vital to a free and appropriate public education for those individuals who receive special education services in our school district. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amanda. Well, we are going to move on to our next speaker, who is going to be Jenny Below. Jenny, are you ready? Oh, great. Right there. Uh, Jenny is the organizer for environmental justice at New York Lawyers for the Public Interest. Uh, she is an amazing advocate. If you don't know her, you should get to know her. Uh, but she's going to tell you a little bit about herself and everything she does right now. Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, I want to start by thanking Council Member Drum, thanking the City Council and the Mayor for moving Intro 455 forward and putting the city's goals into law. This is what we needed. It's great to see so many supporting electrifying the school bus fleet, seeing everyone here gives me hope that we can make this happen. The mayor's executive order to electrify the fleet was a good first step. An even better next step would be unanimous passage of 455. Woo! To begin the transitioning of these school buses to electric. However, for this to be as successful as we know it can be, we need help. State funding to help subsidize purchases of electric school buses. Ensuring that electric school buses and funds generated by the Climate and Community Investment Act are prominent in disadvantaged communities. We Woo! need to help communities that are the most affected. Woo! These communities cannot continue to bear the detrimental health impacts from diesel school buses. As Amanda said, a lot of low-income communities have respiratory illnesses because of the buses, because of the buses that are housed in these people. Electric school buses will go a long way in alleviating this issue. We all deserve clean air. Woo! Thank you. Yeah, Jenny. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jenny. All right. Um, next, we are going to have Jay Mehta, who is the North East Director for Jobs to Move America. Jay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jay Mehta, I'm North East Director for Jobs to Move America. We work in coalitions here in New York, New Jersey, across the country. We at Jobs to America are firm believers in public transit. I believe that all people have a way to go to get where they need to go safely and affordably without having to rely on access to a car. That starts with children beginning with their first day of school, traveling safely and quietly to and from their homes. I'm proud to live in a city where we made a commitment to ensure kids in New York City have a safe and efficient way to get to school. First, our challenge. The vast majority of our existing school buses are heavily polluting diesel buses. These school buses are outdated and can have a negative impact on our children and their development, as well as the health of the communities in which they operate. Our, our communities are already bearing the brunt of air pollution, as are the thousands of bus drivers, attendants, and technicians who work hard all day in those buses and garages to make sure our children get to school safely and on schedule. Now for the good news. We have the technology to be able to transition from heavily fossil fuel buses, clean electric buses, we should do that as quickly as possible. And not just do it, but do it the right way. That means working closely with the bus drivers unions, 
bus workers unions to make sure that drivers and technicians receive the specialized training and job protections they need. And it means taking steps to make sure that the buses are purchased with social and environmental responsibility in mind. We need to start using recycled and responsible source materials. We need to make sure these buses are manufactured at facilities, have family sustaining wages and benefits for all workers. And equitable hiring and training practices that create opportunities for all people. This legislation, intro 455, is a crucial first step. We are proud to stand alongside our allies at this moment to call on the start to call to start transitioning to the school must be right now. The health of our workers, our communities, and our kids depends on it. Thank you, Jay. All right, um, we have another special guest here. We are going to uh, pass this off to Councilmember De Niro, who is the chair of the Environmental Protection Committee. He is a staunch environmental advocate and has been for many, many years in the council, and we are so glad to have him back and have him here today to talk about electric school buses. Councilmember? Do I have do it? Do I have do it? Like that? Does that work? That works. I don't know if anybody's shown you the bill, but here it is. Here it is. It's a great bill. I signed off on it on 10, at 10.01 last night. So here's how it always goes. It goes down to like the night before, and the administration, it was like, who put out a zone plan? They always try to sneak in language about figuring out ways where they don't really have to do it, you know? Depending upon like reliability, um, that's one they always like to put in. They like to put in words like subject to appropriation. Everything is subject to appropriation. And so all, so all this, but I'm really, I, I'm really here to, and, I mean, I did my little part. I mean, like when I came in, I was born in the end of February. <clears throat> this is something that I wanted to get done. And so, um, you know, we work with Danny, we work with the administration, we work with the leadership, but this is really his bill, his thing. I, I know it's around here somewhere. Like, he's, on the bus. So, he's on the bus. He's on the bus. So I just wanted to pay you know, tribute to him, tribute to all of you. The only thing I did is just said that this is going to happen before Danny Trump leaves office nearing the end. There's no way. This is something that really had to happen. <laughs> now, way back in 2005 or 2006, when I did the alternative fuel law for for government for uh, government vehicles, back in those days, we could just do fleet vehicles. We we couldn't even get it. We couldn't even get you know heavy duty vehicles in. Like you know, I, I talked about this back then. They thought I was out of my mind. And uh, also back in back around that time. John Liu had passed a bill through my community, which I supported, that would eliminate diesel school buses. That was in 2005. Not one diesel school bus ever got taken off the road because there was language put into that bill that made the administration, that, 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 that gave them the ability not to comply. We're, go, we're for going this. One road. We're for going we this. You. It's just, it's just me. It's just me. And, but this bill is written in such a way that this is bulletproof. When this is enacted in 2035, I'll only be 78 years old. I'll be, I'll be mayor of the city of New York. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> but um, I, I, I just, um, you know, we have a lot, a lot of work that has to get done. I mean, you know, back in the day, yeah, like I passed 50 major environmental pieces of legislation. But it's always about the next thing. It's always about the next thing. We always look forward. We always and how do we do that? We do that with great leaders like Danny Trump. I was yeah. you, I was saying stuff about you that you would have taken your hanky out. Oh. You would have gone through a box of Kleenex. Ah, oh, Jim, thank you very much. So I just want to celebrate Danny in a very, very special way. <clears throat> and Danny and I both, I'm sure, want to celebrate. I'm sure he talked about, you know, all of your great advocacy, the people on this side, the people on this side. Uh, it, 
Danny and I owe, uh, and the council and the people of the city of New York and the school children of the city of New York owe a very, very special debt of gratitude to all of your great advocacy to making sure that this bill happened. Yeah. Yeah. Now we still got to vote it, but it's on the desk, it's aging, the corners are turning yellow, you know, it's, gonna, it's like it's on parchment or whatever, but um, this is passing at the next state meeting. Danny's gonna stand up very proudly on the floor and take a bow and do what he should do, which is to thank all of you. Yes. So I really appreciate it. I, sorry I was a little late, but I really wanted to be here to pay, pay tribute to you and pay tribute to Danny and all the work still yet to do. We're not gonna get into that today, but today's about this and about Danny's great accomplishment. So thank you all very much and God bless. Danny autographed this for me. <laughs> Thank you so much, Council Member De Niro. We're going to move on yeah, yeah. swiftly to our next speaker. Um, I'm going to bring up Leslie Stevens from 350 NYC. She is the Transportation Committee lead there, and she is also on the Steering Committee. Leslie. Oh, Leslie, I saw you last week. Right right I had a clean vehicle thing. Yes, exactly. And thanks to you, Thanks to you, well, I don't know if you can hear me. We are here today with this bill, which you is talk about it too. We are here with this bill. Danny Bell. Danny Bell 455A, which is, is a that Julie? Which is yes, that's Julie.
really speaking up for my children, and I'm speaking up for all the children who are in the New York City public schools with my children. I want to speak up and highlight especially the children with disabilities and in the shelter system who spend a lot of time on these school buses. And I want to also bring up the fact that the school bus depots are disproportionately located in communities of color, and so those communities suffer disproportionately from asthma and respiratory disease and also learning setbacks caused from the pollution. Um, as a parent of, of young children, I experienced them taking in the world and as they take in the world and become more aware of it, I start thinking how do I nurture them and protect them, especially in the face of so many problems. And I have to say, I, it hit me really dramatically um, when I read the IPCC report in 2018. And I remember zooming in on this, this part that said we have about 10 years, 10 years to do something to mitigate climate change before it really is too late. And so the collapsing ecosystems, the floods, the storms, the refugees, I see that in my children's future and it makes me so sad. And so what I do with that is as much as I can because I know one day they're gonna look at me and look at all of us and say, what were you adults thinking? Like you are the adults in the room, you're in charge, you're the leaders, you're the policy makers. How could you have just walked away? How could you see these smelly, stinking, loud school buses and thought that that was okay? thought that was good enough for your kids. So I, I just want to be a voice for those children because they're in school where they should be. And we are the adults, and I hope that as the adults, as the policymakers, we can really raise our voices for our kids because they are our future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lauren. Um, I'm going to move on to Amy Ming Tsai. She is a wonderful part of our coalition. She is a great parent advocate. Um, she's from representing District 30, uh, 75 here. I'm gonna pass it off to Amy. Good morning, everyone. And I just wanna say thank you so much, council member Grom and council member Cavano, and also all the council members assigned Bill 155. 40 sponsors, 40 sponsors. All of our 40 sponsors. I, I am so that again and so happy because I am a parent of five children. I have a District 75 student. Um, I am a representative of our CC member for our District 75 Citywide Council. And not just for our students in District 75, but also our 1.1 million children that are grieving this every single day as they go to school, as they live in these communities, and especially those that live by the coast. Over 10,000 bus routes every single day during school, including our 12 month program students. It is devastating to know that we still, after years and years of fight for electric schools, clean buses, that we're still fighting for it. And I appreciate everyone behind me, you know, across the city that's been fighting for it 24 7 uh, during COVID because this is so important. And I recall that two years ago, I was standing here on the steps as well with all of them here uh, fighting for uh, clean school buses. So I, I really want to say this is so important that not just for the students, but the families, the communities, the workers, that we move with the MTA system to electrify air clean buses across the city, our two buses and our MTA buses. Um, I, I just, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm about to cry because of everything that we're dealing with right now, with school bus transportation services, a shortage of buses from national wide, this is a very big deal today, this morning. Uh, I want to say, what do we want? What do we want? Louder! Let's get a little louder, clean buses! Clean buses! When do we want it? Now! When do we want it? Now! Yeah. 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 Y
Amy. We have a couple more speakers. Next, I'm going to bring up uh, Kevin Grant, who is an early advocate of electric school buses, and he's the CEO of Evolve Electric. Hey, Kevin! Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for showing up. I really just want to be here to thank everyone that's joined me on this journey. Back in 2017, when I went to a field trip with my daughter, it was the first real experience with a mass of school buses. And when we came out, we could see them, we could hear them, but most importantly, we could smell them. I mean, those, the diesel fuels were just hanging in the air, and being an environmental attorney, I just couldn't fathom how we could subject our kids to this kind of emissions on a day-to-day -day basis. I did my research, and I found out the EPA has no safe limit for children for diesel particulate matter. And these kids are riding on these buses for two hours and more. And I just had to do something. It became a passion project that I could not let go of. And um, first off, I hooked up with um, Eric Adams in Brooklyn. He brought us to the reset meeting and I linked up with the League of Conservation Voters. And I saw Adriana out here earlier. We worked hard to petition for the VW funds. and. Then we were introduced to Daniel Drum. I saw his bill, and unfortunately, he only had like three or four sponsors. And I said, I have to meet this man. And uh, I, I, I go to his office, and thankfully, he and um, Sebastian took me in and listened to me. And I said, if you get this bill back on the ledger, I'll get you the votes. I didn't know how, but I said I would do it. And, and yeah, we did. We, we worked out. 2018, we had all the school bus manufacturers, they came down and they lobbied and they said, we can do this, we're ready to make it happen. New York City is the driving market and there's no reason why we should be lagging behind other states and districts. We are the number one consumer of school buses. One in 20 school buses in the nation is in the city and one in 10 is in New York State. That is incredible and we cannot neglect this duty to lead the nation on this issue. And I'm so proud of Danny for all the work he's done. I'm so proud of all the legislative workers behind the scenes working late at night, redoing the bill, listening to all the advocates, making sure that everything is done. I have to express my gratitude to um, Constantinides, who was the former chair. He worked really hard and got the bill on for the hearing. And unfortunately, due to COVID, he fell ill, his wife fell ill, and unfortunately she passed away due to other, uh, other uh, complications. And they have a son with asthma. So we must know that no one, no one is exempt from air pollution and the ravages of, of climate change. It impacts minority areas and the environmental justice areas. And right now, a lot of community, island communities and third world nations are getting hit hard, but it will come for us. We've seen it this summer. We've had two events that flooded the streets and caused havoc in the city. We see what's going on in California with the fires and the droughts and all over the West. It will get here if we don't act. And I'm glad that we're acting now. And I'm glad Gennaro came in and he took this issue up and he's going to make this happen Woo! next Woo! week. We should have this bill passed. And I couldn't be prouder of all the work we've done, but the work is not over. We're going to continue to make sure that this bill is enacted and this falls through. We're going to take it to the state, and we're going to take it to the feds, Whoa. and we're going to get electric school buses throughout the state. When do we want them? Now! Let's do this! We can do this anymore! Thank you! Thank you for showing up! million tweets Yes! Thank you for supporting my... state count! 455 days without a vote! We need a vote! We're at 1,018! All right! Next up, we can talk a little bit about the work that we're doing at a federal level. Um, I'm going to pass this over to Justin Ballack, who's the Senior Manager of State Policy for Transportation Electrification at the World Resources Institute. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having us here. Uh, World Resources Institute is a global organization that's been around for a long time, but our electric school bus initiative just launched this year, so thank you for welcoming us as the new kids on the bus. Um, we want to really say that what you're doing here is going to make a difference around the country. There are 480,000 roughly school buses around the United States. This is going to send such a signal around the country when we're talking to districts, when we're talking to state governments, governor's offices, state energy offices, 
everybody perks up when we talk about what New York City is about to do in terms of this commitment. This is going to send such a strong signal. We have now one of the two leading candidates for the mayor of Bo mayoral uh, in Boston in the Boston mayor's race saying that Boston needs to be looking at electric school buses. We're hearing from smaller communities, medium-sized communities, people around the country saying that they want to take a look at this. New York City is about to send a really strong statement. And as others have said, we need state funding, we need federal funding. And when we talk about needing federal funding, we don't need federal funding for propane buses. We need federal funding for electric buses. It is time to move forward with an all electric transition and we're so glad to be here. And we're all so proud of the victory you're about to make and have and the signal it's gonna send. Speaker, last but not least, Michael Backman, who's the VP of Sales and Marketing at United Electric Solution. He's the one who got us the bus, everybody. So hello everyone, I'm Mike from Un Unique Electric Solutions. We're really glad to be here today in support of Intro 455. I want to thank the council members and the community leadership of 350 NYC and everyone for their initiative on this important um, important issue. So everyone has um, articulated really well um, why electric school buses are so important. Important to our environment, important to our children, important to the community. We couldn't agree more. So I just want to take the last minute here to add some comments, not anymore on why, but on just one approach maybe on how. How we could get there maybe just a little bit quicker. And that is repowering or retrofitting or converting existing school buses that have already been purchased and are already in service now, as opposed to buying new buses and waiting for them. So yes, it is possible to retrofit the dirty diesel buses you see going down the streets right now and convert them to clean, quiet electric without purchasing new buses. It's proven, um, it's in service, and I offer you the bus down the block as evidence that it can be done. Uh -huh. So that, that bus is generously loaned to us today by Logan, the bus company. Uh -huh. If you can use it, I think it's going to be used very soon. That's okay. okay. We can make more. We, we can make more. So, again, the, the bus is owned by Logan. It's displayed great leadership in moving quickly and beginning their transition to electrification. So I'm just going to explain a little bit more about the bus and the process of repowering or converting or retrofitting, just so you guys are aware of what that is. So, it's very simple. Um, the existing in-service diesel bus rolls into a shop and all of the dirty stuff comes out. The diesel motor, the oil tanks, the bucklers, the turbochargers, all that stuff that makes those fumes that go into the community and into the bus. All that gets taken out and electric motors and batteries, clean stuff, gets put in its place. And that happens in about two weeks, which is much shorter than the delivery of a new bus. So, very simply, dirty buses go in, clean buses come out, and they're going into service. So this is real important. This is one option. We love new buses too. But we think repowering and converting or also new buses is just another option to get there faster. So it's important to know that a converted bus is exactly the same in terms of clean, zero tailpipe emissions as a new electric bus, right? Zero tailpipe emissions, near silent operation, super safe, B to G capable, so we're investigating those technologies exactly the same. And when we take out the old bus, we don't put it into the landfill. The same bus, the bus gets recycled and goes back into service. We're not putting old buses into the landfill. And finally, because it matters, um, it's much cheaper to convert a bus, right? So it's an enabler. It's kind of lubricant for us to move along. So repowering or retrofitting buses is one way to make the change quicker than buying new buses. And finally, at least for this bus, and at least for our company, the retrofit work is done in New York by New Yorkers for consumption by New Yorkers. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell, like and share to help our channel grow. And below you'll find links to our website evolveelectric.org, our Twitter and Instagram.